Right now, what we have is a dictatorship run by a gang. It's a gang under Obama, although I think he's the front man. I think that soon they're going to realize that he's more intelligent that they, than they uh, originally thought, and they're going to find out that they're going to be left out in the cold. But that's going to take a little while before the Rahm Emanuel gang realizes that Obama has outsmarted them and he's not just their front man. I made a prediction on the show yesterday that I'll repeat right now so that you can mark it down. Savage predicts a Reichstag fire-like event sometime within the next year or two in America that will have been conducted by the government and blamed upon subversive elements in order to permit a dictatorship, and a naked dictatorship to emerge in this country. If you think I'm making this up, you're right, I'm making it up. But I'm not making it up out of whole cloth. I'm making it up out of historical cloth. Rahm Emanuel is a very devious man. Rahm Emanuel has deep roots going back to uh, dictatorial inclinations. You want me to open that one up? Would you like to discuss Rahm Emanuel and who he is and uh, what his uh, background is and his father's background? His father was a member of the Ergun in the early days of Israel, which I think is quite ironic when you think about it. Here you have the most anti-Israel administration in modern American history, perhaps since Eisenhower. And the chief of staff's name is Rahm Emanuel. He is from Israel, and his father fought with Meyer Begin in the Ergun in the early days of the foundation of Israel. Some would call, some would, 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 would term the Ergun a terrorist organization. They did horrible things. They blew up the King David Hotel killing British soldiers, if they had any opponents within their own party, meaning Jews against Jews, they took the men that they caught, who they didn't approve, and they hung their they put their hands on the top of doors, and they closed doors on their fingers and broke their fingers. They were not nice guys. They were powerful, brutal, bloodthirsty revolutionaries. That's who created Israel. And that's how every country on earth has been created, by basically by, by tough guys who are killers. There's not a country on earth that's been created by nice men. So let's not make this an exception. So now Rahm Emanuel grows up in the home of a Jewish revolutionary in Israel. And now he is the chief of staff to the president of the United States, who happens to stab Israel in the back as one of his first acts, uh, through the hands of Hillary Clinton, who hoodwinked the Jews of New York, by the way, to get elected. He made, they made her, she made herself look like uh, someone who would support Israel. And the minute she was no longer needing them, she did what was necessary for the New World Order and the powers that be. The uh, secret Saudi money that went in to support Obama needs to be, you know, paid back. I mean, there's a reason that they supported Obama. The long and short of it is Rahm Emanuel, well, Rahm Emanuel was steeped and raised in politics of the most ruthless kind by his daddy. And if you think he's not trying to, prote uh, to uh, uh, act out these policies, these methodologies, I believe you're wrong. For them to attack, for example, Rush Limbaugh head-on in this manner indicates, A, how desperate they are, and B, how dictatorial they are. George Bush, for all of his flaws, and I was probably his most profound critic in the, in the uh, uh, independent movement, for seven and a half years, I tried to steer this man back to the center, but it was almost impossible. He had veered so far to the left, it was, it was a very difficult, daunting task. But you know what I did over the years. It was a very difficult job with George Bush. But for all of his flaws, George Bush never, ever singled out people in the media by name and put them on an enemies list. He never did that. Right now, they're doing it. And if you think Rush Limbaugh is the only one on the enemies list, you are mistaken. They don't need a uh, fairness doctrine. All they need to do is scare off advertisers to the Rush Limbaugh show. All they need to do is scare off the owners of the uh, net of the um, companies that own the syndication company that syndicates Rush Limbaugh by saying, if you don't do this, that, or the other thing with him, if you don't rein in Rush Limbaugh and the others, we're going to do X, Y, and Z to your uh, to your syndication. We're going to do X, Y, and Z to your corporation. We're going to do X, Y, and Z. If on the other hand you play ball with us, we'll make sure that your corporation gets benefits. We are living in a dictatorship, albeit an early sign of dictatorship, albeit the infancy of dictatorship, albeit the baby steps of dictatorship, but you're only two months into the dictatorship. And I want you to use your brains. I want you to use your imagination if you can. Those of you who are not, uh, those of you who are capable of thinking, and I don't know how many Americans are still capable of it, uh, I want you to project ahead. I want you to take the arc of where this 
gang has taken us in two months. They've printed money to an unprecedented level. They've seized control of virtually all avenues of uh, of, uh, of finance on Wall Street and in the banking industry. They've nationalized many of the largest banks by lending them money against their will. What do you think that was? It was a power grab, idiot. Some of the banks said no. They said you have to take the money. In other words, they put their hooks into them. How does the mafia work? They lend you money. Then they charge you phenomenal interest called vigorish, and you never pay back the principal. The government is like the mafia right now. The government has put the hooks into the bank, the banks, by forcing them to take money, and then when they can't pay it back, they take control over the banks. So there it is. Timothy Geith is a little Cub Scout. Now, I'm trying to explain to you what's going on, and most of you are too stupid to understand it. You have no brains whatsoever. Here's an example of a guy, Michael in Las Vegas, who I'm sure does not understand what I'm saying. But oh, go ahead, Michael, go ahead. You're on the show. Well, what has Obama done so far that is making you say that he's a, a Chavez or a, whoever you're comparing him to? Well, so, again, are you stupid, sir? Are you deaf or stupid or both? Let me read it to you again. I, I realize you, you, you may not be able to even hear because your mind is so brainwashed. There's nothing left between the ears. All finance in the country, including banking, insurance, stocks, and bonds and mortgages, shall be under the absolute control of a federal central bank. Do you understand what that means? Yeah. Has he, has he done that? Has he done that? Has he not done that? I'm asking you, has he done that? Has he not done that? I'm asking you, has he not done that? No, he hasn't. Oh, he hasn't? What do you think he has done with the banks by forcing them to take a billions of dollars in loans? What has he done? Well, what, well, what, is what has he done by bailing out AIG Insurance, the largest insurer in, in America, and by yesterday agreeing to give them another $150 billion? What has he done there by taking over the, the major player in the insurance industry? He's trying to save it. If he doesn't do it, what You I see, you're a moron. I told you you're too stupid. You don't deserve freedom. You were born to have a stand that you're being enslaved. You don't deserve freedom. You don't deserve freedom. I'm only addressing people who understand what freedom is. Obviously, there are many people out there who don't, don't, don't even comprehend the magnitude of what is going on. They can't understand this. I realize many of you want to live in a dictatorship because you have no self-control. And fundamentally, you really don't care who controls you because you can't control yourself. In a way, it's a demonic wish to be controlled by somebody. And you wish that this man is going to be a benevolent dictator. But if dictatorships around the world are any indication of what kind of dictatorship the Obama regime will become, should they not, should they not be opposed, I assure you it will not be a benign dictatorship. We have an early dictatorship. It is no longer crawling. It is now walking. The Frankenstein of Obama is now a walking dictatorship. I'll be right back. <laughs> 